What's up guys, Fars here. I'm gonna kinda feel like a GitHub shill in this video because first it was GitHub Copilot, now it is GitHub Code Spaces, but what can I say? GitHub is just kinda doing things right and that takes a lot for me to say because y'all know how I feel about Microsoft who owns GitHub. But when it comes to GitHub itself and everything they're doing, that team there, and when it comes to VS Code and that team there, they're just doing everything right. They're just doing a really good job and Obviously, for any devs at Microsoft, when I talk about Microsoft or anything like that in maybe a not so positive light, maybe even in the present, but the developers at Microsoft, especially under GitHub and under the VS Code team, y'all are just uh, rock stars. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about GitHub Code Spaces, what it is, kind of why I'm talking about it now, which is because it is now officially out of beta and we can have access to it ourselves. And I, well, first I actually want to talk about github.dev because I'd re be remiss if I didn't talk about that first. So let's hop on in here and talk about, it. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so y'all can see, not that you really need to see anything. This is just the private repository for project engagement, uh, which is the YouTube leaderboard, social leader. And haven't worked on it in a while. Well, haven't committed in a while, which means I haven't worked on it in a while. <clears throat> I just had a kid. Okay, relax, relax. I just had a kid. Um, so let me just show you what github.dev is. So for instance, you know, if you want to just make a quick change in github.com, you can actually go, let's go to a particular file. I want to go to leaderboard.js in my social leader project. And you can come over here and you can edit this file directly in github.com. You can commit changes. You can create a new branch for this commit and start a pull request. Well, you can do that, but it's not very intuitive. You don't have your nice extensions. You're not inside of your VS code. And I typically don't like doing that. However, with github.dev, I'm gonna be right here in the main repository. Keep note of that. Take this finger right here and I'm going to hit the period key on my keyboard and it sets up my web editor VS Code. I'm actually going to make this quite a bit bigger because it's so small. And now I basically have VS Code in my browser. And that's basically what this is. So a few things to note about github.dev is one that this is not GitHub Code Spaces. They're just so similar, but github.dev is not as advanced as GitHub Code Spaces. And I will talk about why and kind of more about Code Spaces here in a second. But github.dev, obviously I have my own theme in here. It's not just the generic theme because when it comes to VS Code and Code Spaces or GitHub.dev, because Go Code Spaces also opens up VS Code Editor, just it's a little bit different. With VS Code, you can have turn on settings sync. So if you have VS Code, as long as you're logged into the same account, you have VS Code here or on that local machine or that local machine or that remote machine or wherever it may be, as long as you're logged into the same VS Code account, if you will, you turn on settings sync, all of those settings will be the same. Your extensions, your key binds, your themes, Whatever else you can customize about VS Code, that's all the same. The only caveat there is we're in a web browser and sometimes browsers want to overtake some commands like Control W. So with that, just, just be mindful of that. Another way to go about this is creating dot files. Same exact as what you would expect with like Linux dot files where it's fully customized. You can create dot files for your VS Code and it's the same idea as setting sync. It just has your extensions, your key binds, your themes exactly how you want your VS Code set up can be set up automatically whenever you open github.dev. Now I do want to point out one other thing. We're going to go back to github.com and also notice that this is the same exact URL, except you just change com to dev, just in case you don't want to hit period for some reason, and you want to manually change the URL. But let's go to client, let's go to source, let's go to components, let's go to leaderboard. So now we're in this area right here, I'm going to hit the period to open my web editor and it'll open exactly where I am in my GitHub repository to github.dev and I can do everything here. One more thing I wanna show you. It's the same idea of what I just showed you. We're gonna come over here to this WebSocket chat app that when I was playing around with WebSockets however many years ago, I made it's a public repository and someone made a couple commits, uh, a pull request. And I merged one of the commits, uh, one of the pull requests, and 
he did another one, this fellow right here, just to practice some of his skills. And what I can do, instead of trying to read it all right here and open up, you know, changes over here and whatnot, well, let's hit the period key. And I can open up the pull request directly in github.dev. You can see the commits associated with this pull request. You can see the changes in this pull request. So obviously you know how to read changes in terms of a commit. Same idea over here. And that is github.dev. It allows you to browse files, edit files, commit changes back to your repo and create pull requests. What it doesn't let you do is run it, test it, and debug it because it does not have an associated compute. So if we come over here to run and debug, run and debug are not available in this environment. To run and debug, you will need to set up, uh, continue in another setup. So this is when you would go to your local machine, uh, your local VS code, or use code spaces. Now, what is code spaces? Well, let's just click over here. And as you can see, it is the same idea. It is you opening up VS code in your browser. Obviously you can do it on your desktop as well, but either way, it spins up the environment and has everything ready for you to run that application instead of worrying about all these different dependencies. As long as your your dev files are up to date to how you need your app to run, which they should be if you're committing those files to GitHub. Catch my drift. So it just it spins up a development environment where you can run it and everything, just basically pre-made a little little container. Keyword container. But down here you will notice that it runs on the cloud. So it runs on uh, GitHub's cloud and you can scale your VM up to 32 cores or 64 gigabytes of RAM. So that's pretty cool, AKA faster than your laptop, but that's the idea. So if you wanna actually develop on an iPad, hopefully you have a keyboard because who wants to touch type code? Anyway, if you wanna develop on an iPad, you can in a very simple manner rather than remoting into your own local machine, which in a way that's the same idea as like working in cloud server. It's just your lo your local machine is your cloud server compared to your laptop or your iPad. Anyway, instead of setting all that up and then having to set up everything in terms of whatever this GitHub repo requires to run and test and debug, you can just uh, whip up a GitHub code space and you have everything ready right there and you can basically use a whole other computer on your iPad and not have to worry about your iPad specs really too much or anything like that. And you can code on your iPad. Obviously that is just a, for instance, it, you can use it on any computer and it is very convenient just because you don't have to set everything up locally. And one other thing that I want to address is browser preview and port forwarding. So let me drink a little bit of probably cold coffee here. So browser preview and port forwarding. I think this is really cool because about a year or two ago, I had this awesome idea because I was going through all of these different GitHub repositories. And if I wanted to see how they ran, I would have to install them on my local machine, install the dependency, whatever it may be to get that application running. And then I had to figure out how to run it and then run it. Little tedious, it's oftentimes a little confusing, definitely time consuming. So what would be pretty cool is that if I created a site like GitHub where you could host your code, but you can also automatically run and host your application for what that code is building. So anyone who is looking through your repository, whatever I were to name it, not GitHub, but looking through your repository, they can actually see what that is doing. So instead of setting it up locally and then running it on your port locally, you can do that in code spaces. And then what is also cool about that is if you wanna show uh, another developer or your project manager or a client kind of what you have going on, instead of hosting it somewhere yourself and or, or getting them to spin up their own code space for that repository, because this is on a cloud server on GitHub's servers, you can just make it public, copy this URL, I send it to you, you can type in that URL and it's basically like a website. It's basically hosting it, if you will. So I don't know. Take with that what you will. I think it's pretty cool. And one of the big reasons why I'm talking about this now is because it is a officially out of beta and GitHub's engineering team has officially moved to code spaces. And when I say it's out of beta, it's not available to you and me on a personal plan. But if you 
are on a team or enterprise cloud plan, then you have availability to code spaces. I wanna set up my Node.js project here, social leader as a code space. So Ken and Tina here can easily whip it up, not have to worry about setting up their own development, development environment and they can kind of see everything. Plus whenever I wanna show them something, I can just send them the link. I think that's all pretty cool. And that's probably what I'll be doing here. But since I need a team or enterprise cloud plan, it's kind of going to break the bank. Uh, if I just want to use it for this month, I got to do $4. So, you know, if y'all want to see me make a video about setting up a Node.js project using GitHub code spaces like this video, leave a comment, you know, so I can get a little bit of this money back. I don't know if I'm ever going to financially recover from this, but for y'all, I'm willing to do it. I am willing to do it. There is a lot. Let me, I'm kind of scrolling through here as I talk about this, but there is a lot of information that obviously I didn't discuss, but I just want to give you the overall gist of GitHub code spaces. You can come over to, uh, maybe I'll leave some of these links in the description if I forget, which I often times do. Just look up GitHub code spaces. You can look at the overview, you can read more about it. And, and or you can just wait for me to make the next video of setting up Node.js project using GitHub code, no, setting up a GitHub code space Node.js pro I'll name it something, but I'll be setting up my Node.js project. Uh, I'll, setting up, I'll be setting up a code space for my Node.js project. That was the most difficult sentence I've ever had to say in my life. So to recap, github.dev and github code spaces. Well, first and foremost, they're not the same thing. I put them in the same video because they kind of released at the same time. Github.dev is a web version of VS Code. You can browse files, edit files, commit changes to your GitHub repo, and you can create pull requests. But you cannot run, test, or debug your application because it has no associated compute. And keep in mind that it's running on your local machine. Whereas GitHub Code Spaces basically creates your entire dev container is what you need. You have your VS Code. You can do everything that you can do in VS Code, including run, test, and debug your code. And you can run your application on a port on these GitHub Cloud servers as long as you properly set it up. I, honestly, I haven't looked fully into what goes into setting up a project. That's what I'm going to do again in the next video or two. But we are going to do that as long as I can recoup my $4. But to finish off and put code spaces in the word of GitHub code spaces, blazing fast cloud developer environments, visual studio code backed by high performance VMs that start in seconds. In all honesty, I would have like right under here and run your application to or something like that and run your application too. <laughs> How about that? Just because I don't know why they don't say that in the main line. Like that is one of the coolest things is that you can just hop into a code space on a given GitHub repository that is set up for it, given that it you have to do specific, I think you have to have like a dev container.json. Anyway, we'll, we'll figure that out later. As long as it's set up for it, if you need to set it up for it, you can run a code space and you can see exactly what that GitHub repository builds. I just think that's the coolest thing in the world. So mention it and then, and easily share them with clients because I can just give you the port link after I make it public and you can see exactly the state that it's in right now in the GitHub repository before I push it over to main or whatever. Come on, sell us a little bit on this. Sell us a little bit more and give us a full understanding of what this is in the tagline instead of just, oh, I can do VS code on a VM. Well, I can just, I have a solid computer right here. I can do VS code on my computer. So what's the difference here? This is a difference here and setting it up without having to worry about any extra dependency. Basically, you just don't have to set it up and that's it. That's what I have to say about GitHub.dev and GitHub Code Spaces. I hope you learned a little bit here and maybe you'll implement this on some of your projects. Again, you do have to pay. Also, wait a sec, I almost missed something. You So it's available for teams and enterprise, but you also have to pay seven cents per gigabyte per month, charge when inactive, or if you're using two, four, eight cores with this amount of RAM, then you have to pay this per hour. 
So it's not a lot, but you have to pay for it. It's obviously not free. Um, like maybe like GitHub Copilot probably should be given how they're training that model on public repositories. Anyway, I almost forgot that. And there is going to be a lot of information that I forgot to mention on these. Hopefully in future videos, we'll be able to address that. Or if you know a little bit more about this, address it in the comments, enlighten us. I'd like to learn a little bit more about this myself. But I think that's all I have to say on the matter. Subscribe if you like videos like this. Like this video if you did like it. And I'll see you on the next one.